Yeah. Okay. okay. So class, welcome. Okay. So the materials you have to listen very carefully because these are the materials that you will be needing. Okay. I guess that uh, uh, all of these materials you have bought uh, during the first week. Now I understand also uh, that uh, some of you has lost materials. Okay. So it's your responsibility to keep your materials. Materials needed for drafting is this board. Okay? This is your best friend in first year. Okay? Because second year, you will not be needing this anymore. Okay? So some of the uh, students have already like uh, deleted uh, this things. That's why you didn't need to uh, buy this this year, right? We uh, give it to you. Next is that. You have this T square because you need this uh, parallel. Uh, how we call this thing here? And then you need this scale, okay? And then the we uh, call this the mechanical pencil, and then the clutch pencil, and then the pencil, okay? Make sure also that you have eraser on uh, hand, and then this set squares, okay? One is thirty by sixty. You know why it's 30 by 60? Okay. It's 30 degrees by 60 degrees. And then after that, you have 45 square. 45 by 45. Okay? Now, what happens is that you have this, uh, I call this, the map. Okay? The site layout plan. Now, this one is a scale 1 is a 200. If you're going to look at the scale, okay, 1 is a 200 is this portion here. Okay, you see this. This one is to 20, this one is to 200. Okay, so meaning that one is to 20, the first unit will be one. Okay, two, three. So this one is one, you see? That is one meter in one is to 20. Okay, so if you shift to one is to 200, that is 10 meters in one is to 200. Do you understand now how to read the uh, thing here? So. Scale 1 is to 200, okay? So, what happens is that I gave you a, uh, you call this, an uh, indicative uh, dimension. That is 14,400 m. So, that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, plus 2 units, which is 200 each. That is 14,400. The answer now. So this is an exact scale. Okay? Now, if I'm asking you, uh, you are, I call this, some of you are doing project site A, some of you are doing project site B. Okay? Now, what you do is that, the first one is that before we go to the bigger drawings, okay, we're going to do a layout of your site first. So, this one is scale 1 is 200. It's too small for you to work on. Okay, you have to transfer it into this A3 size as your process paper. Process paper. 14.4 by 13.1. Okay, so how do you do that? First is that you, trans uh, you position the paper first onto the drawing board. Make sure that the drawing board is okay, parallel to the paper. You can use this one, and then you can see that it's parallel to the paper. After that, fix the uh, paper by using only the materials that I specified, uh, not any other materials. Okay? So, it should be masking tape, not every, any other tape. If you put packing tape or packaging tape, it will be, the paper will get spoiled. Or even cellophane tape, the paper will get spoiled. Okay? So fix that until the end, okay? Now next is that, how do you determine the center of the paper? Any clues? Lower line. Lower line where? At the center. <laughs> Easy to say, right? So how do you do it without measuring? Okay, I'll give you some uh, tips. Do a, I call this, this one. Just slide this one, and then after that, draw this one. Okay, from end to end, you have the center of the paper. Understand now? 
So that is the center of the paper. Now, if you can see, I'm not even like uh, drawing lines. I'm just trying to slide the pencil. Okay. So once you have that center, now you have the uh, center lines of the paper. Now, 14.4, we start with uh, the X axis first. This is the Y. Am I correct? So 14.4 divided by 2 is 17, I uh, 7.2. Am I correct? So 17, uh, 7.2 at scale 1 is 2. I told you 75, right? So now, you have to look at your scale whether there is 1 is to 75. So this is 1 is to 75. Now, you have two scales here. 1 is to 75 and 1 is to 750. Right? So, what is this? This is 1 meter in 1 is to 75. This is 10 meters in 1 is to 715. Do you understand now? Okay, so we have 17.7.2, uh, then this one is 6. Point. 13 divided by 2 is 6.5, correct? Plus half of, uh, how you call this, 10, 5, right? So 655, correct? So express 7.5. Two. Okay, 7.2. So that is positioned at the center. Center mark. Huh? Correct? So 7.2, 7.2. Do you understand me? Okay. Now, next is that. Okay, sorry ah, uh. all construction lines, construction lines are, uh. I'm sorry, I, I used the wrong pencil. Construction line is done by mechanical pencil. Okay, mechanical pencil ah. Uh. Okay, so you don't, you just have to slide the thing. You don't even need to see it. You don't even need to see the line. Okay, can you see that? You don't see the lines, right? It's just a guide for you. Now this one is 6.5 and then followed by 6.5 and then you slide the pencil. Okay, now you have this side now. Do you understand? So basically, if you're going to look at it, it's this big to work on. So it's now comfortable for you to work it on. Okay? Now, once you have that one, now it's time for you, it's time for you to finalize the boundary. Boundary lines is represented by long, short, long, short, long, short line. Long, dash, long. You understand what I mean? Correct? Now, if you can see the way I stroke the pencil, okay? It's, you see, ah? I curl it up. You understand? You see? Slow-mo. Okay? So, I twist it. The reason why is for you to have a crisp line because if you're going to notice, if you're just going to draw this one, okay, at a certain point, the pencil lid becomes wider and wider. So you don't have the, uh, how you call this, okay? Now, if you're going to twist the pencil, it actually helps you, uh, how you call this, sharpen the pencil. Okay? Okay? So, long, dash, long, dash, long, dash, long. 
And this is now. Okay, next. Once you have that one, I advise you to, again, construction line. I advise you to create, create a, grid lines of one meter, starting from this one. Okay? See, at the end there is a, uh, I got this. Now, you may want to, okay? You have this grid lines. Okay? Again, look at. Uh, you don't need to create a very uh, strong line weight. Okay? You just have to slide the whole thing. understand okay so do you have to measure that all you need to do is take the 45 okay make sure that this one is locked going this way take the 45 do it there and then the touching point will be that one meter you understand me the touching point Okay, remember, remember, I measured this one by one. And then, this one, do I have to measure it? No need. I just need the isosceles triangle to create one line so that all the touching points on the line is one meter. Do you understand now? Okay, clearer? So it's just a shortcut. Understand? So just touching it. Use my eyes. Now, what is the uh, reason behind? What is the reason behind why I ask you to do these lines? Remember lecture 8? Lecture 8? The arc and tangent, all these things. Remember there's a grid line? Okay? There's a grid line, right? So that grid lines help you basically do your layout. Let's just say, can I have this one? You're going to do a layout. Okay. Onto this one. And you have in your processes, you have three, what do you call this? Huh? You have three spaces. Am I correct? Three spaces. Let's say, for example, this one is interactive space. This one is study area. Okay, and this one is the walkthrough garden. Let's say, now that you have, let's say for example, I enter here, and then I enter here, and then I enter here, walk through the garden, and then I go out here. Let's just say, right? This one, you have it already inside your portfolio, am I correct? Okay, now, once we have this one, together with 
the uh, size that you have here and then the grid lines, it will help you do the layout. Okay, so let's say I need an interactive area here and I know that this is the entrance. You see, huh? I can have the entrance 2 meters. Okay, 2 meters. And then after that, I go here at this area at once. You see, I am leveraging on the, uh, how you call this, the grid lines. Okay, then after that, I have it here. Can you see how things are formed now? Meaning that I have this interactive area here. Okay? Now, this one here might be my planting area. You understand me? So meaning that I can have trees here. Okay? I can have a bench inside here. Correct? I may have like a, this is a study area here. This one can be a table. And then this one can be a bench. You understand what I mean? Right? The table is 2 meters by 2 meters. Let's just say. And then I have a nice picture tree here. Do you understand? Correct? And then after that, I have the study area here. Walk through garden. I want them to really go inside the garden. You see that? Okay, then I can have steps. Correct? And then maybe here I'll have curve. Let's just say. And then after that, I'll have this small thing here. And then I'll go out. Here. Do you understand now how things work? Okay? Without this graph, you can never design anything because your lines will be all over the place. Do you understand? In my lecture also, in my lecture also, there are diagonals. Am I correct? Right? So, Diagonals, your graph will be on a diagonal form, not on this straight form. Do you understand? Okay, if you want diagonals. But if you want a mixture of diagonals and uh, straight, then it will be it will be something like straight. Then from that point, you have diagonal from that point. And then after that, you create that diagonal there. And then... You understand? Is here? Correct? So you base it at one meter by one meter by one meter. Let's just say you have another timber deck here. Let's say diagonal, diagonal. Okay? You have a timber deck in here. Right. <coughs> so your timber deck have these lines. It's timber one. <coughs> Correct? Correct? Now remember I told you, I told you, huh? This is a layout. A layout is what you see on the floor. So I don't want to see trellises, all these things. Am I correct? Right? So what is, let's say for example, you know what is a trellis, right? Or do you know what is a uh, pavilion? Am I correct? Or a gazebo? What is on the floor if you're going to draw a gazebo? 
What is okay? A gazebo has these columns. The one that is on the floor is these columns, right? So let's say, for example, your gazebo is three meters by three meters. The comfortable gazebo is three meters by three meters. The minimum size of the gazebo is two meters by two meters, meaning that is for two person only or three the most. Okay, because each person at least must have, I call this, one square meter of space. Understand? So, a two by two is four square meters. You can only fit until three people only. Right? So, meaning that if, let's say for example, two meters by two meters. You know two meters is this one. One meter one meter two meters right so that will be the position of your column the answer mean yep. so you draw it this way it's here now right because you have grid lines correct next is that if you're going to draw this uh, gazebo you see this uh, this one we established already it's on the floor right but the roof Okay, you see uh, this is the center line of the column. Okay, you measure that one. What is that? That is the, what you call the overhang. The overhang is actually the area coverage. Okay, so the overhang is this one. Represented by, represented by an invisible line. Any line that is broken is considered invisible. You don't see it. Understand? Because it's above. You understand what I mean? Because it's above. Even the way I draw here, the boundary line. Do you see boundary lines on site? No, because it's considered invisible. Do you understand now? Okay, so this is how you do the layout. Next is that. Next, huh? Let's just say this one is for your planting. Right? This is for your planting. Now, ask yourself is your planting a planter? You know what's the difference between a planting area? On the ground and a planter. Okay. A planting area on the ground is that, okay, this is paving. Paving, huh? Right? Okay. Paving, and then this one is soil for planting. Okay. So there is a line because the paving stops on this line. Do you understand? But, if you're going to raise this planting area, raise, uh, meaning that when you raise it, it becomes a planter. Do you understand now? When you raise it. So, now the lines will change. It will now change to double line. No, it's no longer a boundary. This one is a boundary of paving and the planter. This one, the reason why it's a double line is because it now becomes a wall. Do you understand now? Correct? Right? That in L uh, how you call this? If you're going to draw it, it's something like this. Correct? But if it's not, uh, then this is the paving. You understand me? Yeah, right? Yeah. And then you put the thing here. So this is a planter. Okay? As opposed to the other scenario, okay? This is the paving. Let's say this is the paving. And then you just put planting here. You understand? 
it's only a single line. You understand? Correct? Sure, you understand that? Huh? The difference between single line and double line. Okay? So, so, so any kind of wall is represented by two double lines? Yes. Any kind landing of... Bed? Huh? Landing, bed? landing bed? Again, this is your paving. You stand here. And then this is your planting bed. It's only one line because it just gives you the end of the paving. Was that the same height? Yeah, because it's the same height. Understand? But once you raise this area, you need a wall. Do you understand now? That's why it's double line. One and two. Do you understand that? Okay, good. Next is that. Once you have this one, okay, meaning that, huh? once you have this, don't draw at once. You need this one to go on top to do several options. Do you understand that? Okay? Alternatively, once you complete this one, you photocopy it. Do you understand? And then you can just do it directly once you photocopy it. Otherwise, you will have to do all over and over again. So technically, everyone's using the same template. Yes. Understand? Now, if you're happy with this one now, okay, this is how you do it now. Okay? Can you photocopy this paper? No, this is mine. <laughs> Can you scan it? Take picture then. No, how will you? Now, next, huh? Once you have the layout, okay, you're going to transfer this onto an A2 sheet of paper, A2 sheet of paper, and then you don't even only draw this, you will add lines now, like adding this. Adding this, okay, everything that is inside this box. The understand for site B people, okay, then it will be this one, okay, and then this one here, and then until here on the center line. The understand. Okay? Before, how you call this? Then you finalize your layout using the techniques that I do. Okay? Next is that. Okay? Remember, the reason why I give this to you is so that for you to know the hierarchy of lines. What is heavy lines? What is thin lines? Okay? Heavy lines are basically those that are in place already. Okay, now next is that if you're going to draft to draft the layout okay, onto the A2 paper, so this one I want to see you do options okay, on the bottom paper. Now if you're going to do that, okay, look, now you have this one, this line. Okay, after that, you have this. Okay, I hit this. Okay, make sure that your pencil is basically a bit sharpened. Okay? Okay, after that, one, two, three, three units. Okay, and then after that, going here. So now it's time for you to use clutch pencil. Okay, let's just say I'm going this way, I'm going that way, I'm going here. I, I'm not looking to the anymore. Huh? I'm just teaching you the how you call this. Can I borrow a uh, circular template? A circular template. Uh, a circular template. 
Then after that, I have my entrance here. And then going this way. You see uh, the way I, I stroke the uh, pencil. Class is a, you, you may think that uh, it's easy for me to do it. All right. Actually, uh, once you do it, uh, Mr. Sani is difficult. Okay? But you have to start the hard way. There's no easy way out. And this is the hard way. Understand? So let's say I have this ready, okay? Let, never mind. Let's say this one is my timber deck, okay? So I will be, you see, ah, uh, the lines. So this is the one that once it's confirmed, then we transfer to the photocopy one. Yes, uh, the template. The title block. <coughs> Understand? Because you're doing it already. It's a little part now. Yeah, the little part. I'm just trying to tell you how how you draw lines. You see? Timber deck. And then the lines. It's dark and then it's lighter. You understand what I mean? Okay? So now Remember, the first stage is the base plan, right? Base plan so that you don't draw anything yet, only the layout first. You don't even draw where your plants are. You don't draw your plants because we're just doing the base. Because once you do the base, then after that, you photocopy it into five, your base. So the basis without the deck as well, just Absolutely. the lines. No, uh, how you call this? Uh, the, the lines. Yes, correct. You're correct. So only the main lines. Are the main lines only. Like for example, this is a planter. So I need to see a planter. So that is part of the main lines. You understand me now? Right? Okay, but class, listen, huh? we are planting on ground. Do we need planters? It's already ground. Not unless this is a curb. You know what is a curb? It's just a raised, uh, how you call this, edging. Okay, that's a curb. Okay, like in driveways, there's a curb. Yeah. Right? So that, that one. Okay. So you just show these lines. That's the base. So that when you proceed to the presentation plan, presentation plan, that is where now you will use your knowledge and skills learned on applying uh, how you call this the graphics of the trees. Okay? Now, let's say for example I have a tree here. Okay, make sure, where is my scale? Okay, make sure, because your, how you call this analysis, uh, your tree is too small. Basically, it should be big. Okay, now, the tree minimum is 3 meters. That's the size of the tree. Okay, so you get 3 meters from your, uh, how you call this? See? This is actually your tree. That is how the, the, the tree is not small. Okay? Then you may now apply your knowledge when you do your... The diameter, the crown. Even though it's not full grown. Yes. In presentation, that is the uh, acceptable, okay? Then after that, 
you may now Put in your tree. Understand? Then let's just say this one is all planting. Okay? What are the components of your planting? You have tree. Okay? Let's say you don't want palms. Right? You just want tree, you just want shrubs, you just want and ground covers, and then you want turf. Let's say. Okay? This is how you represent turf and shrubs. Let's say, I want the shrubs to be here on the... This one is turf. Okay? So draw this line, and then after that... Basically, you do this one. Okay? And this is now. Okay? Now, make sure that your lines go inside the tree. Okay? Because be below the tree, there's some more shrubs. Am I correct? Now, this one, this graphic is for presentation drawings. Okay? Presentation drawings. Remember, huh? presentation drawings only. But, if you go to... Uh, planting plan or I call this setting out plan okay this is no longer applicable okay the way you represent a tree is just a circle and your trunk like that only. Okay? <clears throat> Understand, huh? Presentation against technical drawing. This one is documentation drawing. Are we going to do a documentation drawing? Yes. Remember five numbers? Five different types of Yes. Okay. Right? Yes. Okay, next is that. Presentation, technical. So setting out plan, all this. That's why I ask you, once you draw everything, photocopy 5. So that you don't need to repeat the base. That's why you need base plans. Okay? Then after that, the shrubs also. Let's say this one is my shrubs. Okay? Understand? You draw one line first. One line, huh? And then shrubs is represented by this zigzag lines. Zigzag. Okay? And then after that, put the tree. Tree. Let's say I have three trees. Okay? Understand? How do you create palms? No. Easy. Okay? Palms. Again, the diameter of the palm is 3 meters. Okay? So I have this one. This is the center of my palm. Okay? After that, I have X and Y axis and then I have to do the diagonals. Okay? After that, again, look how it's done. From this point, This is palm. You <laughs> must follow this symbol. Follow this technical drawing. <coughs> Why? Because it's easier to see what is inside. I can still see, right? Inside. Because 
in presentation drawings, presentation drawings, ah, this is how it should be done. Circle first. Pumps is two to three, depending on the pumps. Okay, so I have this one. This is how you draw pump. Okay, look. One, two, three, four, five, six. You see? Then next. So what is your first order of business? Draw the layout, the base layout, with all the grid lines. But first, you check first what will be your style. Will it be diagonal? Read lecture eight. Understand? Because you don't just select. Revisit your group one's work. What is the, especially you, you have already uh, clarified what is your objective in the garden. garden. But other groups, you don't, don't have identified what is your objective. You will get the keywords there uh, that your garden, you want interactive. If it's interactive, it should be an active lines, all these things. So get it from the keywords on lecture 8 before you decide on what style to put. Right? And inside your spatial diagram. Remember? Your spatial diagram. Interactive space. What is inside? Gazebo. You have planting. All, all these things, right? So let's make sure that it's inside. Okay? Mm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.